Delighted to welcome this evening our very own Rodney Friend, Professor of Violin at the Academy, to give a masterclass. Um, and this is part of the promotion of Rodney's new book, The Violin in Fifths. Um, and on stage tonight we have Hiroki Kasai and James Chen, two of Rodney's students, performing for us as well. Thank you very much, and please give a warm welcome to Rodney and his students. Thank you. Sure. So this stuff that I've been doing for the last three, four, five years, trying to work out if there is an easier way for us to deal with this, what we think is a very difficult instrument, which is a very difficult instrument. So perhaps sometimes we make it even more difficult than it need be. So we must always try and strive for perhaps a technique in well, in both hands, but I'm dealing with this hand because this hand deals with a bow and this hand deals with a fiddle because so much is happening in here besides just um, playing notes. There is all, in my opinion, is most of our color that we produce is in this hand. In this hand, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's mainly textures. This thing we can make a little bit easier because we, ha we have to deal with, with this vibrato. Unless we decide to do this other kind of violin playing which, um, which I, I don't deal with because it's, I was taught as a child 100 years ago to, to play in the modern style. And of course everybody at that time was, was copying Yasha Heifetz. Not copying him but he set the bar. That was the level. And, you know, it was kind of, when I used to go to concerts, even from the age of 11, 12, I had the good fortune to go to listen to the violinists like Milstein or Isaac Stern, David Oistrakh. And then a few years later, I had the opportunity, because I was leader of London Philharmonic very, very early, probably younger than some of you, just after 20 or 21. Um, so then I had the opportunity to work at re really close quarters with them and watch them and even go for dinner with them and all. So I, I watched them practice and I watched them. So I observed these things as, 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 as a young fiddle player. And the ease of playing was always, to me, something really wonderful, which, which was the natural way for them to play and no problems really. They didn't really have problems. Everybody's got problems, but they didn't. Music is, is a personal taste because I, I, I've, I've had the fortune to work with, there was like a golden period of wonderful conductors like Lenny Bernstein and all, all of those people, Giulini, Heiting and so on. So I was concertmaster with them for 30 years. And I learned a lot of music because of the literature is so big and so beautiful. And in that literature, I noticed that everybody, everybody felt differently about the music. You play it one night with the Beethoven seven with Giulini, and then a week later you might play it with, I don't know, Bernstein or somebody. Totally different, different piece. So, Musical taste is, we boil it down to, well, we can put it into a very small area of words, actually. I mean, I think, I think for me, I, I think that my, my group, that, that they get tired of me telling them to sing and dance. But for me, that is all of music, is to sing and to dance. I think that the singing is your sound. If you make a beautiful sound on, it's a marvelous instrument. If you make a beautiful sound on this instrument and your rhythm 
is fantastic. You're in business, actually. The f jumping around and all of that stuff, you still have got to make a good sound with all of that stuff as well. But beautiful is the most important. Why I started to work on this particular technique with this hand, because I think I found that there was something missing in, not only perhaps in my own hand, my own playing, but I found in, in, in a lot of, of the competitions, international competitions or auditions, and I probably, o o over the years, I listened to, I don't know, three, 4,000 auditions for those orchestras. Then I've noticed always there's something that's making this thing difficult. So whatever it is that we find that can make it a bit easier, then I think it's worth exploring. We play an instrument which is tuned in fifths. That's, that's it. That's what we've got. That is it. We don't have anything else. We've got this. But in the, in the, we've got hair here and we've got four strings here. And in there is all of Bach. It's the Brahms Concerto, Tchaikovsky, Szymanowski, Brat, everything is in there that we know in the literature. It's in these four places. So, you know, we come to the stage, having died a little bit backstage, you hear the overture and all of that stuff. And you come and you tune this thing, huh? Not bad. Not bad for new strings. And then, then we have a second thought about that. So we do that. Now we're ready. That's it. We're in tune. And then we're ready to play Mendelssohn's Concerto or Brahms or whatever. But it's not true because the whole thing is one mass of frets. It is totally one, it's saturated with frets the whole way up. And that's why we have that literature inside of this instrument, always in these four notes. So I was thinking, you know, I used to practice my thirds, I practiced even fourths. Six, not so much, they were a bit hard because I didn't like all those, because I, I, I preferred to be sliding with the six. But with octaves, I prefer, yeah, this is important because the octaves, it's the frame of your hand. If your hand is here and you, and you play here, this is the frame of your hand. This is the natural frame. So, it, so if I go outside of that frame, if I go there, I create a little bit of tension unless I soften the wrist. You, have, you have, can extend this way back. You can't extend this way back. I see a lot of people, they stretch with the wrist this way. And here is the stretch, there you can see that that has got to be angled correctly for this. When you play run in, in tens, if you try to do it this way, you're going to be in serious trouble. So I was thinking, I was thinking that, why don't we play the fifths? What is it in, in the fifths that it's easy to play when we do this? When we put, put the hand in this position. And as soon as we put the fiddle here, it becomes very, very hard, very, very difficult to play fifths. So we play everything kind of pretty well, and then suddenly we come to some fifths, and we start messing around with the hand, trying to find the intonation. And that's, it's the wrong way around. It's, it's, this is the best position of all the fifths, in my opinion. So, if we tune, <laughs> I think this is going
So I, f I found that from working and writing music that, I, that, that I, was, I was playing good and finding really great fingerings when I was looking at the music and writing things down and testing here, because this hand felt great in that position. But the most important part of all is the pads on this hand. And having observed all of those people I was name dropping with before, I've noticed that their hand, that's why I put their pictures in that book and not my picture showing this is the position or that is the position or not my own students. I didn't put them in this book. I put in this book these people, those people, Sharing and Yehudi and Jeanette Neveu and, 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 and Kramer and Isaac Stern and Michael Rabin it, and Pinky Zuckerman, Itzak Perlman. And they're all, all of them, in a very, very easy, free position. And if you look there, you look at Rabin's hand. You see the softness in that hand? That allows him to present the finger to the string with any part of the pad that he wishes. Look at him. That's Yehudi when he's about 11, 12. He kind of been taught so much by the time he was 10, but he was able to do this because this was like the most natural thing for him to do. So really what I'm telling you is that I think all of us at the end of the day teach ourselves how to play. I do believe that. I think we have, we go to people who give us good ideas and good information of how this thing works. And the rest of the time we're on our own. So, you know, you go for your hours lesson and then you're on your own for 40 hours or in the week or 30 hours or whatever it is, or even two hours a day, it's enough if you do it properly. And so we really teach ourselves. So I can't remember any particular way of actually playing, except I think that there is, as long as there's no noises when you bow, and that this is kind of in tune, and, and you, vibrato is good. Vibrato, very, very important. Vibrato is very important, because vibrato has got to stay inside of the note. That's why a lot of people don't like vibrato, because it wanders outside the note. It's a wow, wow, but you must hear the rhythm in the vibrato. So, We've got to find a way of, of softening this wrist and, and, and making the fingers relax in, in such a way that we can, we can develop not only intonation, bet, better intonation, but we can develop the correct way to actually deal with the height and, and the positions of the instrument. So if, who wants to play? Come, come Hiroki. All right, so he, so he, he's, he's had a lot of punishment from me with this stuff. So he, so he knows, so anything that, that he does. Play, play to me one octave, starting with open G, not fifth, just straight as it is. So how many fifths did he play here? Just this. That's it, that's all he played. And I've heard already, because what is difficult is to plant this finger, for example, the first finger, if I play one, one, what's the chance in me hitting a perfect fifth with this? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Give me the odds on that. It's important when I play the, when if I play this girl to this way. I, I, 
like to hear the bowing without noises, and I like to hear good rhythm. Huh? <laughs> And now, I've, a ch I've got a good chance that this scale will be in tune. His was a little sharp, to my ear, from having played fifth. His C was a little sharp. Play to me, play to me now. Play to me just this, the these this four notes in fifths. Okay. Now, why I ask him to vibrate is because if you play a fifth with vibrato, you can't actually wander outside of the note. It fastens, the, it fastens the finger into the fifth. So all I hear now is the rhythm. one octave simple easiest scale that we could possibly play play to me as, as if it would belonged in the bit of my language yet. now already to my ear I don't know whether you can hear that but already that vibrato is more focused and actually this intonation is actually more pure it is trust me it is play to me this uh, G major scale now it's also one octave but now go play with a shift. Go, not, don't, I don't want to hear the shift, but I want you to go in fist, single string. Okay, Th this rhythm I don't much, I don't, well, I, uh, perhaps you're pr practicing it like this. I prefer. Note the same with rhythm and with a nice bow. Yeah, even even we can, we can press our bowing as well. We're not going to discuss bowing, but when we go here, then I don't think that I think that we should change at the heel at exactly the same speed coming down as as we finish going up. This way we don't get a click. And there, you know, we don't want clicks when we play. Lots of slow to Tchaikovsky, we don't want clicks. Last one, we can have it, the clicks, but not in the slow moment. Occasionally, if you want to. Okay, so which note was out of tune? Which notes were out of tune there? The G. The G? Okay. No, no, so, so this, so what he's doing now is wrong. What he's doing now is wrong. He, know, he knows it's wrong. Because he, Trying to trying to fix it by altering it around. You mustn't, it will alter by itself. Now here are the natural harmonics on the fiddle. So the 4-4. 
fourth finger is there, exactly where the harmonics are. Play the harmonics and then, but, but play with continuity and with the beautifully even vibrato, because time before, when you came, came down, your vibrato was not focused in, on the D. So you, you wobbled a bit, you came outside of the note on that note. <laughs> Not, not this, never this. There's no point to practice something you'll never use in your life, okay, which is that. There's no way that you can ever play that. There's no piece written that has got that in it. It's better. Even my harmonics are better, and I didn't do anything. One more time. There is the fifth. Fine. So he didn't have to move the hand at all. Play to me a scale, a, a scale using the fifth as the most important ingredient and play the, there with an octave. Carry on. Stop. Stop there. Keep your hand there. And now look at these pictures. You see this position? This is because the wrist is soft. So there's no problem here for him. He can play all the way up the fiddle in this natural way. Well, he can't stay there, but he's not going to use all of this stuff around here, that's for sure. Won't do it. But this wrist and his wrist and Oystrak's wrist and Isaac Stern's wrist and Itzhak Perlman's wrist, it's all in the right place for be, to be totally free. So we have to practice our fifths. So now my, my hand, because my hand is working, if I vibrate the first, first finger here, all my fingers are vibrating. I don't have to assume a different idea on where the forefinger should, should vibrate, because he's already doing it. Look, all I've got to do is put it down. I don't have to do this. Everybody says the little finger is too, too weak. It's, it's, that's not true. Your finger, little finger is really strong. It's, it's a bit little, but it's strong. Give me your little finger. You know, I, I swear I could pull him across the room with this. I could, and vice versa, because he's younger than me. Very, very strong little finger he's got. All of us have. That's the way we designed. We're all designed the same. It's not the thought that that's easy for him because you know he, this, he's got that big hand or he's got that little hand. It's not, it's not true. We're, it's not, I, I saw Ida Handel in my own house. Played to me 24th Caprice of Paganini. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Hand was half my size. Half my size, no problem. One of the most wonderful vibratos you ever saw, and the intonation too, in the violin. Play me a scale fifth with a sixth. Yeah, so this position, their position, it's not my idea. It's something that I can only find when I play and show fifths. It's the only thing that I, it's the only way I could not, can now warm up. I wish I would have known. To, it would have saved me a lot of trouble be that when I was struggling with scales backstage and all of this stuff. If I if I could have just pra practiced with a nice sound and nice rhythm and 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 and, and calm all all of my fifths and everything it would have saved me a lot of trouble. Seriously, I used to I used to go playing all of that stuff. Um, I used to go crazy playing at 10 times the speed, and all I was doing was making myself really excited. And then I really can't play that, huh? 
and that's the only thing that really is of any interest to make a beautiful sound and in tune. The other thing is we're, we're going to practice that till it's right, but we've got to play in fifths as well. <laughs> practice it a lot more and a lot slower until I get to the top, huh? Well, I can kind of play it because at some point I practice hard. It's this thing in fifths. So, uh, but my, my, I'm not, I don't want to, I, before I started to work in fifths, I would be round here for this top thing, instead of fairly straight in the arm. Because the hand falls this way, this way, and that way. There's a fantastic picture in this book, which I just love, of Sherry playing in high position like this. You, you see the arm is, is wonderful. And then they play in the low positions like this. And it's just incredible. So easy, so natural, because we all have got two arms and ten fingers. We all can do everything if we do it in the natural way. And so when you practice, it doesn't matter what you practice, it has to be with this softness in the hand so that these pads are presented correctly and with a beautiful sound. There is a place in there that makes it work. Which is the highest note of all of the Bach? Partitas and sonatas. E is close. Close. E is close. Ah. Close. It's not the highest. Ah. Oh, this is out of tune. So F is the highest note. So it's not such a big deal for us to learn all of those fifths. To, I mean, it's what is, I don't believe that the arm has moved round at all. It's, I'm not, the arm is not in fifth position. Fifth position, as I was taught it, I think, I was, somebody mentioned it to me, fifth position is there. But my fingers feel all wrong for that. So I put it down like in there. The only time the arm is, is swinging in and out is for E string, a string, D string, G string. That's it. That way. So if, the, if that arm is presenting the hand correctly, we can play our fifths. We must learn to play our fifths. Why is it not in the scale books? Why? Carl Flesch was a fantastic, phenomenal brain and knowledge of, of how this thing works. One of the great, greatest ever. And then I look in the scale book, no, no fifths. Thirds, played to me a, a Carl Flesch scale in fifths. Any key? G, it's I, always easy. When, when you're demonstrating, always easy. No, but show me the arpeggios. Sit on it. When you think it's kind of there, vibrate. Now, this is not in tune. Make that in tune without touching my hand. Make that in tune for me. Absolutely, absolutely correct. It's the arm that is out of tune, not the finger. Because I'm playing on the E string side and not on the G string side. No good. No, no, it's, it's not, it, this, it's got to come. That's right. There's. Okay, so you see that, that you heard that, that G change. 
It changed to the correct fifth. Not because he, wa he wangled around with the finger, because he presented the arm, he presented the pad onto the instrument correctly. You can't do it with a third, you can't do it with a Ford, because there was a great, a great teacher called Dunis. Whoever heard of Dunis? Who practices Dunis? Really? So he, so you know, he had the clockwise, this, and then he had this. So two hand positions, position A, position A, this, and B. When you reverse the fingers, so all thirds are in position B. All six are in position A. Octaves are in position A. Do you understand why? Because the, the third, the fingers have got to stretch that way across the instrument. And Dunis was right. And the one who introduced that to me and actually started my, my whole way of thinking about this, this system was, was Ruggiero Ricci. And I, I was in Japan on, on, in a competition and I was with him for two weeks and, and he was, every time he, that something he didn't like, he said, I don't like that hand position. And it was always that position that he didn't like. Because he said, that's just tension and there's no way that you can play fifths or thirds of. So it was the first time I heard anybody talk about fifths, but I thought about it a lot afterwards. And, and he says, Dunis wouldn't allow that. And so then I started to practice Dunis Daily Dozen, which you should get anyway, because it's, it's, it's a, it's a marvellous introduction to hand positions. But the fifth is something in between, so it can deal with thirds and sixths and octaves, like he's showing you. Uh, so I play a scale, not just in G, in all the keys, and as high as you want. Octaves, thirds. Fourths. So if we practice those, if we practice our fists like that, and we start to think of, give me a, tell me a famous passage in octaves. The most famous passage in octaves on the violin. Huh? So this is the way I would practice these octaves of Beethoven Concerto. Now I did something, I don't, you know, so I didn't play that. This A I didn't play with open and three, which almost everybody does. Because I have this beautiful frame of the hand, which is natural, like when we drive the car or like when we do anything. Now, I'm not going to break that frame by coming to this and start all over again with the frame. I'm going to keep going. So you can practice the whole thing. You play the whole concerto this way, and then you will start to vibrate beautiful, and, and, and also you will find that your left hand is coping with, with much more ease, in my opinion, because we're playing in a very, very na in natural ways. We're not, we're not playing fifth position, sixth position, seventh position, we're playing up here. This long, it can go a long way, this thing. Huh? It can go awful far, awfully far. <laughs> It can go a long way without having to come around the fiddle. Then we get on with this. Play me the opening of Vignati Concerto. Because that's what he's studying now. Okay, bravo. But I, there's something in the, look, I like it. I don't love it. Because I tell you why I don't. Why don't I? The 
the rhythm in the vibrato? I don't, I'm not so keen on the vibrato. Not, it's just, I can hear it as a fraction outside of the note. Play to me just these few, three, four bars, play them in fifths to me, in tempo, with a, with a beautiful sound, and don't stop. Now the vibrato will be different. Play to me now. Okay. Different. Who cares the difference? Yeah, because, because it's, 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 it's obvious, right? It's not magic. It's just that it, it's controlling the finger. And so already it starts to sound beautiful, this. And all of the things which are difficult, play to me. Show me this. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason that he finds this fairly easy. He finds it fairly easy because he's not, he's, not he's not doing this all the way. He's using more or less just this thing. Easy. Play me before the staccato or something. Uh, the staccato? No, before it. A couple of bars before. <laughs> no, listen. This is another thing. When you do something that is like wrong, you're not going to get locked up. Nobody's going to come after you and put you in prison. So you mustn't stop, though. You have to go, because you know all of us are going to do that. Everybody. Shall I name names? No. All right. But don't stop. So, so, the, so this arm is more aligned and everything is going to be easier for him. You can have a rest. It's really nice the way he plays, and I'm a fiddle player, so you know I'm whistling half the day long. <laughs> I did it that many times in concerts, it's broke the string. Even when I broke a string, I tried not to stop. You can't stop. You've got to play through it, because we're practicing stopping, and that's one of the problems with memory. You practice and practice and practice stopping. Every time you do something wrong, you stop. When I'm, when I'm working with somebody or trying to help, I'm not going to stop them because I hear a whistle. I'm never even going to even mention it. He can play this piece however, as long as the sound is beautiful and, 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 and the rhythm is great, he can do what he wants in there. Come on. A little bit more focus the sound, it's a fraction light.
Okay. So, bravo, bravo. I like, I like his intonation, I like his sound. I don't like this rallentando every two bars. I would like it to be relentless. It's only thing, it's the singing, he's singing really very, very nicely. Can be a little, little bit more open the voice. It's a fraction light, but that rhythm is making me hang back a bit. I want it to go, I want it to go through. Again. Okay, so I might come back after the intermission if he keeps playing like that. Otherwise, I'm going to go and eat. Mm. Bravo, <laughs> bravo, bravo. Play to me a difficult passage. Think of a difficult passage. We have not, I promise, we haven't rehearsed this. It looks as if we rehearsed this, but we haven't. Oh. We're just doing it now. How about Joss Tchaikovsky? Okay, bravo, 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 bravo. Show me how you practice that. Put your fourth finger on, on the A string. No, just, just the A string, not the fifth. Now, can you feel the fifth underneath it? So now it's the fifth. But you were pushing it. That's right. Because it's on the E string and, and he's under a little bit of pressure now because he's playing to all of you and, and I haven't heard him practice this thing, but he's playing on the E string there. But if he was playing there, the fifth is underneath it. I could feel it even when I play on the, on the A string. I can feel that fifth. But even I know, did you practice this passage in fifth? Play from the beginning again. Da -dum -ba -da. And don't slow down. Tempo. Good sound. Concert. You're in you're in now Royal Festival Hall, okay? Okay, bravo. It's hard. It's a very, it's one of our difficult passages, like the opening of Beethoven Concerto or the first page of, of Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. I mean, that's so hard, that thing. But if we practice it correctly, it's going to be not as difficult. We, all of this stuff is so that we can have a feeling of making the instrument a little easier and not more difficult. There's too much activity 
There's too much tension from this position here, and there's too much activity with this going round and shifting and God knows what, to playing this. How can they? Look, look how unnatural this thing is. Even if I kind of do it fairly natural this way, huh? It's still a funny position. And if you see somebody walking in the street like that, you'd think they'd gone out of their head. <laughs> one position, two positions. One, two, one, two. That's more or less it, more or less it. Really. More or less it. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> really, I want you to just enjoy your fiddles and, and remember, remember your soft wrist and remember your arm positions. And please excuse me to any of my colleagues who, give, who teach you and work with you that I'm not trying to interfere with anything. It's just something that I believe very, very strongly in and I've observed at very, very close quarters and discussed a lot. So think about it, huh? All right, have fun. <laughs>